Hey everyone, this is Coach Julio, and welcome to my Learn How to Overcome the Roller Coaster of Weight Loss and Gain workshop. So, before the pandemic, this was one of my free workshops that I did in person, but now I am doing it online. And since it's free, I'm going to record it so you all can benefit from my workshops and help you achieve and exceed your weight loss goals. So, let's jump right into it, shall we? Okay. So shameless plug, if you don't know, my workshop is based off my book, Break Out of Break Even, Three Steps for Proven, proven Long-Term Weight Loss Designed for Your Lifestyle and Goals. You do not need to buy any the book or any of that stuff. What I'm going to share with you is information that can help you get started today. But I just wanted to do a shameless plug. As I mentioned, it's designed for your lifestyle and goals. All right, so I need to do a quick disclaimer. Always get medical clearance prior to starting any new nutrition or physical activity. Not everyone in the group are health and fitness professionals, so note the majority are sharing their personal experience and should not be taken as professional advice. So usually when I do this workshop, whether it's online or in person, I obviously have a group of individuals and we share, so I always have to have a disclaimer like that. Um, all right, so quick, really, really short bio about myself. I'm a native of Boston. I'm the founder of fitnessfoundry.net, a leading online resource for health and wellness. Um, I'm also an author of three books. I've been doing this for over a decade. I've helped countless individuals to, from different levels of fitness to achieve their body sculpting and personal training goals. And I would, it would be a privilege to help you uh, achieve your goals too. And I have a unique blend of Western exercise science and holistic arts. And I've been featured in a couple of TV shows in print and online. And I have a diabetic cat that's not in there, which I like very much. So I just thought I'd throw that in there too. Um, and I should also note that I'm also a continue, continuing educational provider. All right, so now how is this relative to our workshop? So my workshop is called Learn How to Overcome the Roller Coaster of Weight Loss and Gain, right? So I speak from experience. So let me let you listen about my experience. I'm gonna share with you some quick pictures of my weight loss journey before and after and along the way. A little bit of background. Uh, I have not always been overweight as a fitness pro. I actually came into the industry pretty lean and mean, around 194, I'm the 10% body fat. However, it is worth noting that as a child I was overweight and I also had depression. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about my experience of weight loss and depression, I did put a link in the description uh, of a recent interview I had with a logo, a local magazine. My personal weight gain um, started due to inactivity, and I also started to explore a new career. If you don't know, I'm also a real estate agent in Massachusetts. I'm here to be of service, um, and I was also doing fitness. So the combination of inactivity followed by eating more food and not working out and not me and, and basically say the excuses are trying to come in that's how my weight gain occurred it was a period of time and when i checked the scale it was 260. boom so as i was noticing the weight gain it wasn't um it wasn't that urgent for me to lose the weight and um, i was more focused on work and just work and then the time came that I was just not happy with myself. And yes, depression came back because I became very self-conscious of my weight. So how did my weight loss journey begin? The day came in 2014 um, where I decided to reach out to my professional network and ask them for help and for advice. And what I heard was, Julio, you know what to do. You just need to apply it and I'm going to help you um, with the accountability part of it until you are in full swing. Throughout the years, the last four years, give or take, I've, um, I've successfully, successfully kept the weight off and I've been, um, to use the term that I, I, I got from one of my, uh, my friends who are natural bodybuilders, they call it body sculpting, I decided as I started to lose the bulk of the weight that I wanted to body sculpt. And what does that mean? That means that after being 30%, and then getting lower in body fat percentage, I was also doing strength and conditioning exercises. So when the weight was coming off, I was able to preserve lean muscle. And then as I was starting to get into the teens for body fat percentage, I was able to sculpt my body. 
and you can do that too. There you go, my friends. So sorry for the audio. What I was going to lead into is what I'm going to show you in my workshop as your virtual coach. So I speak from experience. I can identify with the challenges, the successes, and the struggles, and we're going to work together. Okay, so let's jump into it, right? I'm so excited. So what you will learn today, I'm going to help you identify and overcome challenges in your lifestyle for losing weight and maintaining your progress. So sorry about the typo. Effectively apply science-based tools and the AIM method to empower and help make better decisions to stay on track to reach goals. Um, strategies on how to optimize results through nutrition, customized resistance training, and cardiovascular exercise selection. So basically, you will no longer lose or gain weight without understanding why and learning to overcome it. So that's the meat and potatoes of it, my friend. No guesswork. You're going you're gonna to feel totally empowered with what I'm going to share with you. And uh, let me backpedal a little bit. As we go forward, I am giving you a general overview of my weight loss system and how all weight loss programs work based on a specific science, and I will get into it. Um, so that's very important. This is an hour and a half workshop. And after we go through it, you will have the necessary tools to jumpstart whatever you're doing or continue. But I'm going to ask you to continue your research development and reach out for more help, including with me. There it is. So after I go through this workshop with you, I'm going to encourage you to research the terms and methods used in this workshop to deepen your, your own understanding on the science of nutrition and other modes of fitness. Um, so thank you. So normally when you attend my either in-person or online workshops, I would send you a couple of handouts or worksheets because this is a hands-on workshop. This is a learn by doing. That's the best teacher, I believe. And um, I'm just going to go over the sheets that you would have received. However, since you're watching this video, you can still participate and I will tell you what you uh, what you can do. So basically, you're going to need like a pen and a paper, um, your phone, your phone will have a calculator. And I will go from there. So pen, paper, calculator, and um, let's get started. And oh, by the way, these worksheets, the majority of them are on my website too, and I'll show you where they're located. So here's another sheet that you normally would have. And here's another one that's part of my toolbox that I send to everyone. And guess, guess what? Everything I'm showing you is free because this is my free workshop. Body sculpting reference sheet. I am big on healthy living, of course, so I also send you a little packet, a healthy living packet. And I'm in there, I bring you to some information about sarcopenia and how to manage it, to re you can't reverse it, and just to introduce it to you. I also talk about, as you see, is um, some meditation types and the benefits. Healthy living is the whole point of, of losing weight too, right? Because it ties into it. You'll find some motivational quotes in the packet. And then you'll also find um, where you can find me on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Fitness Foundry, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and of course, my website. So that would have been part of the handouts and worksheets I would have sent to you uh, if you were going to participate in my, one of my future online workshops or in person. And if you're like, hey, man, I can't do neither right now. Can you send it to me? Yeah, just reach out and send me an email. I'll send it to you for free. It's no big deal. All right, so what is breaking even? We have to have a starting point here. So breaking even is a term that I coined for my book. So breaking even is when you invest time in exercising and eating healthy, but do not see results, especially long-term results. Maybe some of you can identify with that. So here's a prime exa example of breaking even. Uh, would be exercising five days a week and overindulging on the weekend. The caloric expenditure from your weekly exercise was offset by all extra calories you consume, perhaps without even noticing. So I've done that before. Then the next example is eating healthfully, complying with the diet, and exercising as often as possible, but having a roller coaster of weight loss and gain. So those are two prime examples of breaking even. Um, so you can post in the comments your experience of breaking even. So normally in my in-person or online workshops, we would share because through the sharing, we all can realize that it's what we go through is extremely, extremely common. And, um, and through that discussion, we start to develop a bond 
and then develop some friendships which and a support group which i'm huge on and that's has always helped me with my weight loss journey is having the outside support uh, so very good so we'll continue so here is one of my clients who um who gave me a quote regarding the aim method which i'll i'll get into it so her experience of breaking even Prior to my using the AIM method, I would say I was dedicated to working out with some frequency, three to five times per week, but it wasn't getting me where I wanted to be. I was just maintaining my weight. I am an avid bike rider, did a couple of bar classes a week and muddled through my own weight workouts, but it had no focus. And I just thought, given my frequency with working out, I could lose I couldn't lose any weight because I had hit a fitness plateau. So that's Jane. So that's her experience with breaking even. And then we'll come back to her uh, after using the AIM method. So next question would be, right? What is the AIM, AIM method? The AIM method. So I promote a three-step method that develops skills and self-awareness for long-term weight loss management. The program is designed to be sustainable, flexible, and customized to fit your lifestyle and goals. It is important to note that the emphasis is weight loss management rather than sports performance. And following this program, you will learn how to best eat and exercise to promote fat loss. Sounds good, right? Nice. So let's continue. So what does each letter stand for? The A and the A method stands for assess. Um, in this workshop, you're going to learn how to assess your goals and use science-based tools to personalize and create a realistic and measurable program. And on the flip side, you're going to commit to take responsibilities for your weight loss through a series of small consistent actions with a timeline. The I, initiate the customized nutrition and exercise prescription with a purpose. And on the flip side, connect. Engage your mind and body in a balanced three-step approach to nutrition, cardio, and strength training for weight loss. The M, Motivation will be gained from learning how to overcome your own challenges and avoid common setbacks. So on the flip side of the same coin, change. You use motivation and understanding of key weight management concepts to achieve your personal goals. So that is the AIM method. In a nutshell, the AIM method is a program that teaches you about your innate potential and helps you optimize your results. Everybody wants results and let's Everyone wants long-term results. So here's our friend Jane after the AIM method, then came the incorporation of nutrition into the fitness picture. I wouldn't say I was a bad eater, but when I had a caloric goal, put that side by side with my activities and understood that if I wanted to lose weight, there were parameters I had to work with then, it all started to click. It's not about starving myself. It's about being smarter about what I was eating from portion size to more protein and tracking my exercise and my food intake. So Jane lost 10 pounds in 12 weeks. And I'm gonna share this because I don't believe um, you understand. She lost 10 pounds in 12 weeks and her expected weekly weight loss was not two or five pounds, it was a half a pound. Wow. Uh, wait a minute, nope. That would have been 12 weeks times half a pound. So it was, a, it was between a half a pound and a pound. Haha, <laughs> very good. So habit is the intersection of knowledge, what to do, skill, how to do, and desire, want to do. Stephen R. Covey, I'm big on quotes. Very good. So let's continue. Now, if you had the complete, if you had in my workshop, I would ask you to complete that questionnaire. So for our purposes, all you need to do is to write down your current weight, uh, how often you work out, what do you work out with? So if you do strength training, write that down. If you do cardio, write down what type of cardio. If you have any equipment, write that down. The duration of your exercises, right? Um, so those, there's some other questions in there too. And then I want you to note down what your short-term and long-term weight loss goals. So let's say short-term, like three months, three to six months, give or take, and long-term, six to six and a year plus, so long-term goals. So write those things down and um, and we'll continue. And then you'll notice my last bullet, make sure you date what you're writing down and sign it. 
So this is the accountability part. So this is the best part about what you're doing. We put in pen to paper and you're gonna, you're basically signing a contract with yourself. <laughs> it's all gonna work out my friends. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see, group exercise, group exercise time. Let me bring out one of my favorite toys that I would have in my in-person or online workshops. So again, I'm your virtual coach. So if you, you can post in the comments your answers and then obviously you're gonna see. So uh, still not gonna show it. So one thing that I'm huge on in teaching is that there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. The internet is generally information, not knowledge. And there's a ton, and I'm not gonna get into it and share opinions, et cetera, but generally the mis misinformation is to sell you something. So let's start to debunk. So one of the things on the internet would be like, um, what weighs more, a pound of fat or a pound of muscle? Let's say it again, what weighs more, a pound of fat or a pound of muscle? I'm saying it slow, what weighs more? So you will see a question like that on the internet and you can post your answer on uh, or in the, uh, the comment line. So some of you are like, you already gave me the answer and how you were saying it slow. Yes, so let's go. So if it's a pound of fat and a pound of muscle, they both weigh a pound. So the biggest difference between um, the, the fat and the muscle is volume and density. And, and that's the, the truth. So if you have a pound of feather and a pound of rocks, you scale them, it's the same. So for our purposes, for our weight loss goals, it's important to know that a pound of muscle and a pound of fat, uh, the difference is volume and difference. Now, how does that tie into how we hold it on our body? So think of it like this, like five pounds of muscle take about approximately as much as three tangerines. So five pounds, so I'll put it around my waist, three tangerines, you know. Five pounds of fat take approximately as much space as three grapefruits. So you feel the volume and then the density if you squeeze it, you know, etc. So the next time you are in the supermarket, you can grab your grapefruit and tangerine and share with the people around you. Hey, do you know the difference between, uh, don't do that, that was a joke. So hopefully you get an aha moment there that there is a difference in, uh, in having more lean muscle and how we carry it. Uh, our, our, our body composition and how it ties into um, fat and muscle. So we just leave it at that. And then that connects to healthy weight loss expectations. Uh, so that was fun. So just, I'm gonna go over some, just some tidbits that you may or may not know, or just some review. Everybody uh, should value reviews. So let's go really briefly over macronutrients. So there is four calories per gram in protein. Uh, there's four calories per gram in carbohydrates. There's nine calories per gram in fat. And alcohol is seven calories per gram. So we can drink our calories is basically what they're saying. And it's effect on the body, meaning like alcohol and the metabolism and how it processes or um, sugar, et cetera. Uh, that's not what our workshop's about. I just want to give you general information to make better decisions and to help you uh, ask more questions. And what your questions asking would lead to more understanding of the, the high, wow, high and how of weight loss. Um, so let's look at all of these macronutrients as energy sources, okay? And obviously it ties into uh, body function and, and, and uh, healthy living. But let's look at them as energies, energy sources too. So first thing first, right? Let's start with simple math on losing weight. One pound of fat is, check out what I have on there. It's in uh, parentheses, approximately 3,500 calories is the source. It could, you can, you can, for our purposes, we needed just a starting point. We're just gonna use 3,500 calories. If you wanna debate and put some other examples, that's 1,000% fine, put it in the comments because you're gonna encourage discussion. However, for our purposes, we're just gonna use 3,500 as a general starting point. All right, my friend, that was it. I was, I will step off my, um, my high platform. A Couple of other tidbits you may or may not know before we jump into the program. Um, so if you did not know, your body requires more calories to sustain mu muscle than fat. So therefore, appropriate strength training exercises are an important component of this program. So as I st when I started earlier, I mentioned the, um, the healthy living packet. And in there, I talked about sarcopenia, which is basically as we age, some of us, well, all of us 
go through a process where we start to lose some lean muscle. It accelerates after, you know, like after 30, depending on what study or research you look, or even in your 40s. The whole point about uh, strength training in my article about sarcopenia is that you want to start strength training. You want to preserve as much muscle as we have. Um, it ties into healthy living. So once again, I want you to explore the sarcopenia, the benefits of strength training, and how it connects into, um, into weight loss. So another thing to be very common side effect of diet only, meaning no other workouts of weight loss is the loss of lean muscle mass. Our goal is to preserve and increase lean muscle in order to keep your metabolism running at its peak. If you did not know, now you know, cardio does not assist in increasing metabolism. No, it doesn't. So that was, that was pretty quick. We're gonna minimize muscle loss by avoiding an extreme caloric deficit, unsustainable diet, and emphasis on realistic caloric deficit via nutrition, rest, and combining appropriate resistant exercise and cardio. So here are our three areas where we can get a caloric deficit and we'll talk about it more as we continue. So from nutrition, we will create a reasonable caloric deficit based on your basal bet, um, metabolic rate, lifestyle and go. From cardiovascular exercises, I'm gonna help you and I'm gonna show you how to identify which equipment or activity will achieve the necessary caloric expenditure and is time efficient. In resistance training, we will identify what exercise will achieve the necessary caloric expenditure and time efficiency plus burn, burn calories up to 48 hour, hours post-workout. That's EPOC, energy post-oxygen consumption. That last part about the strength training. Um, so just think of what I just showed you as you can have three ways of trying to create a caloric deficit. You have nutrition, cardio, and resistance. And you may just do nutrition because you don't have access to cardio equipment. Um, but any type of form of physical activity with your nutrition caloric deficit is highly, 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 highly suggested. Let's continue. So again, ties into healthy weight loss expectations. Uh, most people can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Your weekly results will be contingent on meeting your personalized total weekly caloric deficit. Some individuals may lose more than two pounds per week in the first phase. That's my timer. That means I need to speed it up so we can get to the next section. <laughs> Some individuals may lose more than two pounds per week in the first phase. This depends on how active they are before beginning the program and how high their daily caloric intake is compared to their suggested intake for weight loss. So just that in a nutshell, if it's not self-explanatory, if I never knew how many calories and I was eating like 5,000 calories, and then later on, we discovered that you only require 2,000 calories, you know, to maintain your current weight or to, for, your, for your weight loss goal. So if you go from 5,000 to 2,000, you're going to naturally start to lose a little bit more weight in the beginning, more than a person that is only going over like 500 calories or, or 1,000 calories over their um, BMR or their total daily energy expenditure. So we'll review that. So that just shows how how important it is to understand what your weekly expectation for weight loss is. Because without that, it can lead to discouragement and then abandonment of our goals. So in other cases, due to specific work and lifestyles, individuals may lose a half a pound per week. Yes, half a pound per week, but with consistency can achieve any weight loss goal. If you are already active, completing three to five workouts per week, then we need to channel your discipline and energy toward a program specifically designed for fat loss. So that's a, not many people are, are able to do three to five workouts per week. And um, there are many advantages when you're able to have uh, frequency of workouts per week, but it does not exclude people who are not doing that. Doesn't mean you cannot achieve your weight loss goal in a healthy way, it does not. It's just different ways of using our time and energy. So regardless of the brand, my friends, whether it's a point system, a high protein diet, a 12 week up week workout program, everything that you're going to see on the internet, all will have the same principle in common or infomercials on TV, caloric deficit, caloric deficit, caloric deficit. I'll say it again, all weight loss systems, programs that you're going to read or you may have done in the past, it's going to have caloric deficit, caloric deficit, caloric deficit. Yes. Very good. 
All right, group exercise time. And now I'll put my timer for this next section. Okay, so for this one, our group exercise, do you know how many calories you're currently having per day? So you may say, I don't count calories, that's fine. But you can't say that calories don't count. So I like that little phrase. So, so you may hear, you don't have to count calories to lose weight. That is true, but you cannot say that calories do not count. Playing with words there, I think you got the point. And uh, hopefully as I was talking, you got to enjoy um, the cat doing some gymnastic. So what we're gonna do right now, um, I'm going to show you how to get your BMR. So earlier you would have wrote down your weight, et cetera. And I'm gonna use me as an example. Now, when I asked you earlier, just right now, if you knew what your current caloric intake, it's very important because it's gonna tie into everything we're gonna do going forward. So all kidding aside, if you think about as I go through this, the last 48 hours of what you ate, what you drank, just get an idea. Do not nitpick. When I say count your calories, don't go to the very decimal, you know, just a general idea. It's perfectly fine. And then just write it down. And then we're going to see uh, how that connects to, to your weight loss program. All right. So normally you would have this sheet and I'm going to help you do this worksheet, this part of the program without having it because you could just use it on a regular piece of paper. Okay. So we're going to learn BMR, basal metabolic rate and phys physical activity level, POW, what that means, and total daily energy expenditure. So for me to do that, I need to do this. Oh, turn black. So let's see. And then I'm gonna go to my website. So the, you can find these calculators anywhere, um, but uh, if you're like, hey, I wanna support Julio, then go to fitnessfoundry.net and you go to resources and notice all these cool things, those worksheets I talked about, testimonials, et cetera, podcast articles, but for our purposes, calculators. So I just clicked on it and we'll go to it. Okay, so let me put this down for a second. So I need to find out my BMR and you can too. So if you're on that page, pull out your phone or another uh, device, if you're a woman, you can use the women's side. If you're a male, you can use this one. I have two different BMR calculators. There's one based on the Harris-Benedict um, equation, and this, which does not need to know your body composition, meaning like your lean muscle. Then I have a catch Ricardo BMR equation. So for this one, you will need to know what your lean body mass is in kilograms. And then this one, you don't need to know. So for our purposes, we're just going to use a regular BMR that has Harris-Benedict. As I said earlier, we just want to get a general idea of where our BMR, and I'm going to use me as an example. Um, if you ask, hey, which one's better? I the preference would be anything that's based on your lean body mass. How much different it is, it's not going to be that significant, but you very like you should do both. So very likely it might be between 200 to 300 calories or 150. It can vary, but again, let's backpedal to um, to doing my BMR, and then I'll walk you through it. So you have your device in front of you, and I'll go first. So I'm going to enter my current weight, 198. How tall am I? How tall am I? I am shrinking as I age, but as I think as of now, I'm 72. And now I have to make public how old I am, which is cool, um, 46. So it says here my BMR is uh, 1888, so I rounded up 1900. And I failed to mention, hey, what is BMR? So a basal metabolic rate in a very, very general uh, definition is how many calories you need to sustain organ function or life in itself. You do nothing all day. You hang out in your bed and I'm not doing anything. No other activity than just resting there. So about 1900 calories I need with the data I just entered. There are more technical terms that you can look up but for our general, for our workshop, it's just how many calories you need to sustain organ function at rest life. All right, so I know my BMR is 1900. However, all of us are active, right? I get up, I do what I do. Um, so I want to find out, and I'm going to help you find out what your total daily energy expenditure. expenditure. This is a very, 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 very useful tool. I said very many times. Why is it useful? Because with this information, as of today, we're going to find out how many calories we need to maintain our current weight. So I know I want to lose weight. 
but how many calories do I need to eat to maintain my 198 that I weigh today? So let's do that. And then from there, we can work backwards to create a caloric deficit. So I say my BMR is 1900. So here's your phys physical activity level. You can Google it and do some more research. So don't mind, I'm not a big fan of how these are phrased, um, but for our purposes, I'm gonna have you select the first one, which says you are sedentary and do little or no exercise. Many people are gonna say, I do a lot of exercise, et cetera, but this one is more like a general population parameter I'm giving you 1.2 to 1.3. Physical activity level, is is basically a um, how many energy expenditure that people do based on specific activities. So if you're a sponsored athlete that maybe work out for like five hours a day for six days out of a week, the intensity of that five hour day, five hour workout day is very different than Julio maybe working out three times a week and for an hour and 45 minutes. So that person's physical activity level is gonna be much higher. And it also includes resting and eating and other activities. So for our purposes, for the general population, I'm gonna to suggest to stay within 1.2 to 1.3, give or take, you can play with it, it's a parameter. And if you look at those labels for nutrition, it's gonna say like daily food intake, nutrition is 2,500. So it just gives you an idea. Um, so I do 1.2, which is the first one, so it says for me to maintain my current weight, 198, it's about 2,200 or 2,300, give or take. So I'm big on parameters. So let me go up one. Oops. So I go to the next one. So it says 2,600 for the next one, you know, exercise. Again, the way it's worded, it's not, I'm not a big fan because if you look up physical activity level, you can find that the same 1.2, 1.3, it goes up to like 1.4 and 1.7. It could be phrased differently, but I'm suggesting that you consider staying within 1.2 or 1.3 if you're part of the general population. So right now I'll give you a parameter of what, 2,300, 2,600 to maintain my current weight. I'm gonna be very conservative. I'm gonna suggest for you to be conservative and I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna use the lower spectrum because I want to lose weight. I don't wanna keep this weight. So as of now, I'm gonna say, okay, 2,200 to 2,300 to maintain my current weight. Now earlier, I ask you to write down um, what to, to, to make an estimate of your caloric intake, right? So now you can compare that to what your body needs to maintain your current weight. So you may be like below what, uh, if you did what I just did, your BMR, then you did your, um, your TD total daily energy expenditure and you can fool around with the power physical activity level, you can compare that to what you're currently eating. So if you're happy with the weight you are, you're probably not watching this um, workshop. Um, if you want to lose weight, then the TDE is a great tool, a great, uh, it's a great data. And I say it again, just be conservative and go on the lower end. So hopefully um, if you have any questions on that, you can email me, Google it, uh, post it in the comments because um, it's very important. So I said for myself, it was 2,300. So that's a starting point. Now, utilizing BMR and physical activity level will establish how many calories you are consuming versus the necessary calorie caloric intake that's conducive to your weight loss goal. Learning your TDE, which we just did, will reveal the caloric intake to maintain current weight. Not knowing your TDE, so if I didn't know that I'd need about 2,200 calories or 2,300 calories to maintain my current weight. Uh, when I lose, let me backpedal. Let's say if I lost, like I lost 70 pounds, right? Once I lost that 70 pounds, it's so important for me to know my total daily energy expenditure for that weight. And then I have some parameters because it's not sustainable to stay on a diet after you hit your weight. You will have, my system is all about behavior, lifestyle modification. Your whole lifestyle is gonna change how you look at food, your food selection, and uh, hopefully your activity. But it's also important to know, hey, I hit my goal. What, what do I do now? What, how many calories do I need to eat or you know, to maintain what I currently, um, my success weight? So you get your TDE for your success weight, and then you try to stay like, don't go above 500 or 1,000 like for three days consecutive, consecutively because then you can start to roller coaster. But once you get this TDE, it's so important. So that last little bubble, knowledge of TDE, 
it provides a framework to create a safe caloric deficit. So that's where we're heading to now. Okay, so group exercise time. So I just explained the TDE. Let's see. Now we're going to do METs. Um, we're going to find out how many, well, let me backpedal. If you don't know what METs are, let me give you a brief explanation. METs is a metabolic equivalent of tasks. It's simply a measurement of how many units of energy is required for the duration of the activity, okay? Most fitness and caloric tracking apps have this feature already included. So for example, if you're walking on the treadmill for 45 minutes at four miles per hour, for someone who weighs 200 pounds, um, this will equal 330 caloric expenditure or calories burned in estimate, always an estimate based on five minutes. So where do we get these met numbers for these activity? A bunch of scientists got together a whole a, a long time ago and made um, a, a compendium of physical exercises and mets. And uh, that's what these apps use. And before these apps, you know, have just online calculators, but I'm gonna show you how you can access this information and knowledge is power. So um, let, let me show you how it's done. Because once you understand what your METS is for the activity, you can start to um, plan and put in your program how many calories you expect to burn, and you can choose which exercise is worth doing versus another for that same duration of time. So I'm a big, like I said, uh, hands-on type of workshop guy and learn by doing. So let's do a couple of things. I think I forgot to show you one thing. Let me go back here. So it's a little bit different when you a virtual coach, I don't have people talking, et cetera. So uh, just be patient with me and hopefully you're getting something out of this, doing my best. So normally you would have this exercise G form. On here, you see a list of different exercises with the METs. I'm not assigning those metabolic values to these exercises. It comes from that list. It just gives you an idea. And it's based on uh, metrics and intensity. So for example, if you look down here, it says spin. If you're between 100 and 160 watts, that's about 8.8 .8 METs. If you're on an elliptical and you say I'm at a moderate intensity, it's about five METs. Now, if I'm rowing about 100 METs, watts, that's seven METs. Now, people say I golf. I walk, I carry clubs, 4.5. Yoga, depends on the style. It starts between 2.5 to 4. Treadmill, again, depends on the miles per hour. And then you see there's a whole bunch of stuff. I don't think I have walking in there, but that's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of different examples of, of my caloric expenditure for a specific exercise for the same duration of time. And you can play along too. So let's see, we'll go back to fitnessfoundry.net because you'll help, you'll support my website. Thank you so much. All right, so let's say I'm going to do... Um, what was it for the for the spin was like let's say eight mets right I, I think it was like eight something like that that's if i stay between 100 to 160 watts so we'll put eight my weight's 198 and i do it for 30 minutes boom so it's 350 about estimate 56 calories that i can burn i, I have an idea that i'm going to burn even before i do it does that make sense it's like I know if I, I'm going to plan on Wednesday, I'm going to go on that bike. I'm going to stay within 100, 160 watts, and I'm going to burn about 356 calories. So it kind of helps me plan my day. So if I wanted to burn more, you know, obviously I just go for, uh, I can either increase the intensity or I can increase the time. And you want to be careful if you increase the intensity, you may not do as much time because you may burn out. So let's say for that same time, right, 30 minutes, I'm just going to go for a walk. So it's 2.5 METs, let's we'll say two, let's we'll say three METs on the treadmill and at four miles an hour. So for that same duration of time, 30 minutes, it's 133 calories I'm gonna burn, give or take for my weight. See what I'm saying? So this is how we can choose, we can review what we're doing, let me backpedal. So what you're currently doing, be like, uh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z, and then compare that to something else that you may have access to equipment wise, or whatever you have access to and see for that same duration of time if you're getting the maximum caloric expenditure possible. And that's how we, we start to be, um, we start to optimize our potential. 
Now, of course, the main, main metrics of this would be weight, right? So if I was 150 pounds, the, the, how many calories I burn would be less. Now, if I weigh more, say, let's say 250, which I've been 270 at one time. So that's the walking. So as you can see, you just, any, most fitness apps will have this, but you want to be very conservative on the intensity because that lets you select, right? It says moderate, et cetera. Um, I'll share this tidbit that most people do. And I could say at one time, I probably did too. The majority of people will always overestimate how many calories they burn when they're doing a physical activity. Hey, I just worked out and it says I burned a thousand calories and then very likely you did not. This is based on your heart rate, not your weight. You know, it doesn't make it. If, if it had your weight and, and so the measurement. And so what I'm trying to get at is um, a lot of times when we are not using our own weight, but when the data coming from the equipment. So say like a lot of equipments may have um, actually may even show you the watts and mets. Then to really get a really good guy understanding how many calories you're burning, it's going to be like a gamble. So backpedal again, a lot of us tend to overestimate how many calories we burn. And on the flip side, a lot of us tend to underestimate uh, the caloric density of the food we eat. Yeah, it's just a vicious circle. But as of today, we're not going to be doing that. But it's good to know. So back to the Mets. The more frequent your weekly workouts, the less the caloric deficit. So that ties in. Not everyone can do weekly workouts, but and you can still achieve your goals. But the more frequent your weekly workouts, the less caloric deficit you would need from your nutrition. Your program needs to be realistic and based on your current lifestyle. Um, and knowing the assigned caloric expenditure for each mode will help in planning your week. So feel free to post your comments, you know, of uh, activity or equipment that you prefer that you find is very useful in getting a high caloric uh, expenditure. Again, it could be rowing, uh, arm trainer, uh, jump rope, you know, and then well, oh, I forgot to show you the physical compendium thing. Let me backpedal, a lot of backpedaling. Let's go back up here. And here it is. I'm all about transparency. So it clicked right to it. And as you see here, there's a whole bunch of different exercises. So it's like cycling, bicycling, BMX. And then we go over here, here's the met value. Bicycling between 14 to 15, 16 miles per hour, racing or leisure, that's about 10 mets. And then you will multiply that against the duration and your weight. So let's see what else. Uh, coal mining, farming, uh, just calling out something, tailoring, telling you they have everything, running, different miles per hour, walking, um, frisbee, squash, rollerblading, everything you can think of is on that list. So I don't think all the fitness apps have this complete list. You can Google it, you can check it out, and you can just play with it, sailing. Um, so again, I'm big on being transparent and giving you information that can help you make better decisions. So very good. If you like that, why don't you like this video? Because <laughs> that would be cool. That was fun. All right, so let's see what we have next. Let me share a recent success story. And by the way, we are gonna get to the point where you're gonna start to enter your information again to help you with your own program. But let's hear Susan's story. So that was my little spiel. So Susan, so um, first and foremost, before we um, before we log in, Susan, you, you want to give me an update on one of your latest achievements? Yes, I have lost ten pounds. Ooh, yeah. Ten and, pounds. And as I said to Julio, this is the first time I've lost ten pounds when I wasn't getting divorced in a hospital or having babies. And I said, I don't have a comeback for that because I usually have a comeback. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and now the, the other thing is that if you want to give, well, I can explain Susan was using a, a, a method, a system for long-term weight loss that's based on behavior modification and was personalized with her. Um, I never uh, gave her a meal plan because that's outside my scope of practice. That's for registered dietitians. I just explained to her the science of weight loss, gave her the tools and provided the motivation between sessions. 
Is that right. about right? That's absolutely right. And and it's the first time, I mean, I've never done Weight Watchers, so I never tracked before. Um, so it helps you think about, it, it helps you think about the choice. Like if I want to have pretzels, um, what else am I not going to eat? And how am I going to keep this going week after week after week? So it's been two months. We've done it for two months now, almost two months. Yeah. Would you also agree? Cause I'm huge on this. I, uh, because it's based on behavior modification, basically lifestyle, that it's not a linear process. We have peaks and valleys, but we learn from the valleys, but we try to have less valleys. And um, I gave you support and continue to give you support so we don't turn back uh, and then kind of erase what we did. Right, right. I mean, it, it felt less yo-yo-y than, those, than other diets have. And it felt like it's the first one I've done where it felt like I knew what I was um, I knew what I was doing. Do you know what I mean? It felt like it was organized. And because you were there, I felt like I had. So that last part was about the accountability part, which I can always offer. You can always reach out to me. And um, and you'd sign that piece of paperwork earlier, too. So as you heard her, she lost 10 pounds. And her weekly expectation, expected uh, weight loss was a half a pound to a pound. It wasn't three. It wasn't two. So again, and, and then she used the same exact tools that you guys are using. To um, to achieve her goals, but the one of the one of the things I'm going to keep harping upon is oh, it's just going to let me is to know for sh to have a really good idea of what you're going to see per week based on how much effort and what what you are doing. You know, if you are doing the work to see a, a pound of week weight loss, then you shouldn't go on the scale and see three pounds because you're not doing the work for it and it's not part of your program. But if you see three pounds and something could have happened during that week and vice versa, if you're doing the work of um, if you're if you think you're doing the work to lose two pounds per week and you don't see it on the scale, you see like half a pound. And that's when you review what you did. And there could have been some continuous days where, oh, yeah, I actually went to this party and I didn't, you know, I kind of let myself go, which we all do could happen during the holiday. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm that's what I was getting at. OK, so now let's get to. Um, and let's get to scenarios. Now let's let's start to use that information and put it into use. So what we're going to do together, and I'm going to use me as an example, I'm going to we're going to do different scenarios. It's like losing one pound or two pounds per week. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how we can lose one pound per week based on, only on nutrition. That's it. So it's like I'm going to have my uh, my my break out of break even program or whatever you're currently using. And uh, I'm just going to lose one pound per week only on nutrition. I may be active and do other stuff, but that's that's just going to be an extra bonus. Then we're going to do one pound per week based on exercise and nutrition. So remember, where we, it's all about caloric deficit, caloric deficit, caloric deficit. So for some people, they don't have the equipment or the time to do exercises um, like cardio stuff. So so other people do. So you have two different mod modalities. And then the last bullet, it says exercise only leads to a roller coaster. All that means, roller coaster, weight loss and gain. All that means is that you can never outrun nutrition. That's all. If you're exercising, exercising, great. And you're eating and you don't know your caloric density of your food. So that generally 99% goes like this on your, on your scale. But once you get an understanding of your caloric uh, intake a day, compare and in parallel with your exercise, then you can start to trend down and you can work with that and chip away and create a, a reasonable, sustainable caloric deficit because we can never outrun nutrition. Abs are made in the kitchen. That's a quote somewhere. Okay. So quick review, right? So I talked about earlier about the one pound of weight loss per week, which is um, 3,500 calories. Just that was an estimate. So now I don't want you to think, hey, 3,500 calories. No, let's go day by day. The way we do programs and workouts, I mean, uh, the way we do a weight loss program, long-term especially, is that we need to, to break it day by day and we need to have parameters. So we're gonna say 3,500 divided by seven days. That equals, we need a 500 caloric deficit per day. Now, you, so let's say for some people, they wanna lose two pounds of weight, weight loss per week. So that's 7,000 calories because two pounds is 7,000. So they need a, a, a thousand caloric deficit per day, daily. And then you got the other one, which is a half a pound of weight loss per week. 
and that's about 250 caloric deficit. So half a pound is 1750, and all I did was divide by seven. That's how I got to 250. So I showed you actually a couple of examples, like Susan and um, the Jane testimonial. They were between a half a pound to a pound per week. And what do everybody have in common? Half a pound, two pounds, one pound, three pounds, whatever it is, is consistency. Consistency, consistency. But um, it's not a linear process. There'll be some peaks and valleys. And our goal is to have less valleys and more peaks and learning from those valley, those challenges that came about from the valleys and never giving up. All right, so that was that brief. So now if, again, if you were doing, if you're gonna do my future workshop, well, if this was in person, uh, oh, I'm jumping ahead. So when I talked about when you have an understanding of um, how much weight you decide that you're gonna lose, you wanna lose based on, uh, 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 on your lifestyle, that's your timeline for the framework of the AIM method. It shows what to expect each week and it's the yardstick or gauge for progress. Um, it's gonna be very important that you're gonna choose what is most realistic for you. Start with one pound. If you are struggling after a few weeks trying to hit a pound, then drop it to half a pound. Consistency is very important, in developing new habits and long-term results. Okay, so this is what I was gonna show. So normally in uh, future workshops, which you can participate, or if you want the worksheets, or if you do my in-house, in person, you would have this sheet in front of you. Earlier, we did the BMR. We got the, we used the physical activity level. So we got your TDE, total daily energy expenditure, to get an idea how many calories we need per day to maintain our current weight. So mine was, um, I think I went down, I said 2,200. So we're gonna go to that, that my website to, to do these, these little exercises. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use that with this sheet. You would also have, this one in front of you too. So let's jump into it. Hopefully you're having some fun. All right, so I'm gonna use me as a, as a guinea pig, a case study. So let's say I'm gonna go long-term, let's do short-term. So this, that's the half a pound. So if you see on my, uh, my website, you can choose half a pound per week weight loss when you're gonna see your, um, your goal, one pound per week, and that's all I, I have, that's enough. So let's say I wanna lose one pound per week. I'm gonna show you in really in a nutshell um, what a program can look like. So I'm currently 198. Let's say I wanna lose, I wanna be 190, right? It's gonna take about, see this number right here, eight weeks. So eight weeks is what, like close to three and a half months. So as of today, I'm gonna to decide, hey, this Monday coming up, that's the beginning of my uh, my program. I'm gonna get my stuff together, or it can be today. And then eight weeks from now, I hope to be hovering at 190 or making progress towards 190. If I don't hit 190 at, during that time, then I have to reassess what I'm doing, what I'm not doing, I'm in between. And then over here, I can say once again, I'm 198 and my long-term goal is 180 is pretend. So that's 18 weeks. So again, I have my calendar, put it in my phone, whatever. So it's cool to have, and you can have like reminders up there. So I have that, it's 198 and 190. Now let's come down. So for my BMR, I did it earlier. You know, we inputted all the information. It was about 1900. I keep going down. We'll get to the Mets later. I did my total daily energy expenditure, which for using the 1900 BMR. And then I used a 1.2 because I like to be conservative, which was about 22, 2,300 calories actually that I need to consume on a daily basis, give or take, to maintain my current weight, which is 198. Now, I don't want that. I want to lose a pound per week, which was 3,500 calories, right? You guys remember? So that's going to require, as we said earlier, I'm going to jump here to just to show you because I'm, let's go back here, here. So remember this thing, I need a 500 caloric deficit per day. And I'm just gonna choose, as I said earlier, which was the, um, the scenario one, I'm only gonna do this through nutrition. My other activities, if I do Tai Chi and all that, that's just gonna be for healthy living, but I'm not gonna count it in the actual program. I'm not discounting it, but I want to make sure that my results are gonna come just from the nutrition part. Okay, so now I got that. I understand it's 500 caloric deficit. Now we're gonna use that number. Let me get out of this. Let's bring this up. 
So I said, as you can see on the screen, 2300 is my is the total daily energy expenditure I need to maintain 198. Yours will, will be what it is. You just do the same math. Now I got to subtract 500, give or take. And that's my number that I need to have to, uh, to get close to a pound per week for weight loss. So I can actually go 1700 to 1800. That's the parameters. I like to set parameters. So if that was, if my number was 1900, I usually try to play between seven, 18 to 1900 or maybe 150 lower because a lot of times if I, a lot of times we can underestimate the caloric value or density of what we're eating, especially if you're eyeballing it and you know, if it doesn't, it's not actually on the label. So I personally, just my opinion, you don't have to do it this way. When you find out what your caloric budget is for this today, as you're seeing for Julio, it's 1800. I personally like to go about a hundred calories that's my budget, 1800, but I try not to hit 1800. I try to go 1700 to 1800. You're getting the idea, 1650 to 1800. I need a little wiggle room. So now I have that number. Um, then I won't be disappointed at the end of the week, after the end of seven days. Okay, so uh, we had the 1700. Again, if you were uh, in person or you can have this, you can start doing this now, you can follow along. So all these will be filled out. How was my total daily energy expenditure, which was what, 2,300. Now, you saw the math I did. That 1,800, I would actually put it right here. You can put it on any sheet. Then that was 500 calories. That was the deficit that I needed for a pound. And then I would go over here, 500 times 70 equals 3,500 calories or about a pound. So this little bottom part, it's just to give you an idea uh, if I were to do other stuff. But since I'm only going to be doing my nutrition, uh, my weight loss goal from my nutrition, I will carry this 3,500 from here to down there, and that's it. Now, let's say um, I wanted to do scenario two, right, for a pound. Let's see, I think I can backpedal. So scenario two was one pound per week based on exercise and nutrition, right? So I this some things don't change. So I still want to do one pound per week. That's it. I just need a 500 caloric deficit, give or take. And where that comes from, whether it's nutrition, cardio, or resistance training, or all three, I just try to meet this or exceed it. That's it. So now I'm saying to myself, I'm going to also do some type of equi uh, exercise that I can do consistently. So let me get out of that, and then we'll come back here. So this is where the Mets come in. Uh, whoop, let's backpedal. And I believe it was just here. So now I'm going to choose. I say I have 30 minutes a day or three times a week. Let's say three times a week. And I want to see which exercise activity I can get the most caloric burn from. Expenditure. So I'm just going to use these METs again, right? So I'm, let's remember, there's 8.8, .8, we'll say 9, uh, and yoga. Now watch this. So I go here. So we'll say 9 METs for the uh, spin. I'm 198, oops, currently. I did 30 minutes, it's about 400 calories. So I did say today I did that for 30 minutes, 400 calories. That's close to 500, right? But I also, um, I'm doing my nutrition too. So the last, what I'm getting at is the last remaining 100 calories to meet 500 can just come from nutrition. So you can, you can mix and match like that is what I'm getting at. So let me go back over, let me go back over here, give you another example. Let's say I'm just doing yoga and I think it was like, I just give it like a three, just give it a three. Same duration of time, 133 calories, let's just say. So that means about a, the remaining calories to hit 500 for that day, 100% has to come from nutrition, give or take. See what I'm saying? Let's do one more. Uh, so five is a conservative number for strength training, give or take. But that's, I believe it's just, it should be vigorous. It's not like vigorous is like where you have like jump rope in between and you're also lifting, you know, you're, 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 you're Vigorous is, can be subjective. 
So let's just say you have periods of where it's very challenging, but safe, okay? Uh, so see for my same 30 minutes, 200, 225 calories. So the remaining 220, the remaining calories to hit that 500 caloric deficit is gonna come from where? Nutrition, or unless I did another activity. But uh, it's best just to, nutrition has to be a part of it because you can't outrun it. So we come back over here, right? So that's kind of like giving you an idea of how you can, let's go back up here, how you can start to program your week to hit that weight. So as I said earlier, I was 2,300, 1,800 was the caloric budget I needed. I know I need a 500 caloric deficit to meet per day. So it was 1,800, that's my budget. 500 calories caloric deficit, where am I gonna get that from? So if I wanted to just do 200, and 50 calories, I will put that here, just 250 is the best I can do, times seven, and then that will be, that answer will come here. And then my other thing was say three times a week with the, uh, the cardio, and then that will be three times. So whatever that comes out to, it needs to equate to 3,500 calories. So let me do a quick math on this. So I wasn't gonna do this, but let's see, just, just play with it, right? Let's put this here. Let's say I do consistently for the whole week, a 300 caloric deficit times seven. So that's 2,100 out of 3,500 calories. So I need that remaining 1,400 calories, right? So just remember 1,400. I was able to do three days of activity that burned about 300, cal uh, 300 calories. So that's 900. So then that means I have, so 21 plus 900, I think it was 21. So I'm, I would not hit uh, exactly 3,500 for the week because I'm adding them, putting them together. Um, but I'd be pretty close. In the consistency, you will see gradual weight loss. So the actual number of 3,500 is an approximate, but you want to either meet or exceed it. And uh, it's just to, it's just so you don't be, because the scale is not going to show, hey, look, it's like exactly one pound. You know, it's, it's going to hover around. So this is just, again, a general overview of how you can combine uh, caloric deficit from the nutrition, include your activity using uh, METS or something equivalent that can give you a solid or a really good idea of how many calories you're going to burn and compare it to what you're currently doing uh, because that's going to help you with your weekly weight loss expectation. All right, so we're back to it. So I put this, this, um, this slide back up because it's important. So choose what is most realistic for you. Start with one pound. If you are struggling after a few weeks, then drop to a half a pound. Consistency is very important in developing new habits and long-term results. So that goes right into the timeline is the framework for the AIM method. It shows what to expect each week and is the yardstick or gauge for progress. TDEE, -E, total daily energy expenditure, very important. So how does the AIM method work in the pandemic? It works. Hey everyone, this is Coach Hula and I hope you are well. So I'm about to do a quick video. I'm about to check my weight. I might do this once in a while. It's been a while since I've done this, since the pandemic and the lockdown and the shutdown. And um, I'm one of those individuals, just to give you a little background, I've always experienced the roller coaster of weight loss and gain. Yep, since as a kid, I was, um, I'm not genetically gifted, I was overweight. And in my 20s, I was going through the roller coaster of weight loss and gain, basically by running it or stopping eating. And until I learned the science, when I entered the fitness industry, I was able to break out of breaking even. And breaking even is the term that I coined a couple of years ago, which is when you exercise regularly, eat healthy, but are not seeing long-term results due to under, not understanding what it's long-term weight loss is, is based on your your lifestyle. So needless to say, I was as heavy as 270 pounds at one time, and I've been as light as 185. Um, and these days, due to the pandemic, significant impact on me personally and professionally, I, I haven't been as active. I, I'm active, but not as active as I was 
But the main point of this message is that we cannot outrun nutrition. So yeah, so um, I had my moments where I had a lot of brownies and all that good stuff during the early lockdown, and then I had to dial it in. And um, I know I'm not alone with that. So needless to say, I'm going to just weigh myself, and then you're going to see uh, my weight. So um, it should be between 190, 195. And lastly, if you check the description of this post, um, there will be a full video of my weight loss journey that I did about a year ago. And it explains more in detail what I encounter, what I've done, and how um, having a, a support network is very important and understanding that there is a science behind this and you can do it too. So here we go. Um, let's see if I can flip this. So bring it down. Oh, I gotta step on this first, right? So I'm on. I thought I could just flip it. And here I go. Hopefully you can see that. And that was it. So check out the link. Um, in the description, reach out to me for any help and assistance and you are worth it. Break out or break even. All right. So the whole purpose of that was, was I'm, I'm, I have to be kind of repetitive because that's part of my style, is that if, if you, what, what you do in your weight loss program when it comes to nutrition, using uh, creating caloric budget, caloric deficit, using your TDEE based on your BMR like I did, and then uh, being honest and realistic of what's most uh, sustainable for your lifestyle, whether it's one, two, or three, or half a pound per week, that means you literally can know a week or two weeks from now where you're going to hover around for the weight. So if you think about it, if you ever see a pro athlete, right? A pro athlete, they have that weigh-in day. How is it that every time they're going to go to the weigh-in day, you know, they obviously have their, their, um, their coaches and all that stuff. They hit it. They meet their way in. And if they're if they're not going to meet it and they know like two weeks out, then they're going to do something extreme, which I don't recommend, but they are under professional guidance to hit that weight. It's the same science of uh, what I'm showing you. There is no difference. So unless you have like that sponsorship and all that, then hats off. You won't even be watching this video. But uh, I'm basically just sharing with you that it's the same idea that knowing what to expect is so huge for weight loss. And uh I think I, I, I repeated that enough. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. Oop, don't, don't want to hear myself. So what's the secret to long-term results? You know, the secret is making short-term weight loss goals with a flexible and personalized program based on your lifestyle and goals equal long-term results. Now, I said earlier, much earlier, now after you hit your goals, which I know you will, um, you want to know what your TDE is for that, day, for that, for that goal weight. Um, because if you don't know what, what your total daily energy expenditure is, is for your new weight, then you may be going too high, you know, consistently, and then you can get that roller coaster that can go really high or low. So try not to have three days in a row of going over by 500 to 1,000 calories after you hit your goal weight, you know, and then that's, that will cover holidays, right? Thanksgiving, some of us will have leftovers, et cetera. Uh, and don't deprive yourself. You can always jumpstart your weight loss program at any time, and this knowledge doesn't go anywhere. Now remember one pound of fat is approximately 3,500 calories. Keyword is not the 3,500 calories, it's the word approximately. But again, we use that as a general guideline. All right, so you now have learned how to break out or break an even. Woo! I should be more enthusiastic, my voice. Like what happens with a good book, each time you return to it, you may learn or pick up on something new. Experience is a great teacher. What you comprehend from this, the first time you read this workshop or attend this workshop, you may understand more after a few weeks of practice in the AIM method. So practice will always make, not perfect, but practice makes progress. The secret to long-term re uh, results. This is just from my experience. You're not gonna find this in the infomercial because you can't, they can't sell this. You wanna start this journey with another person or even in a group. And I'm gonna show you, I actually have a Facebook closed group for my breakout break even um, people. After you hit your goals, share this method and support the journeys of others like I'm doing with you. This is the secret that is universal and is absolute. Helping another person will help you on many levels, reminding you of how uncomfortable it was in the beginning and how it got better with time and practice. So there you have it. Um, you wanna support Julio? Or you wanna know what else I do? I also do health and wellness event demonstrations, online workplace wellness, um, personal training services, 
and I'm huge on community outreach fitness programs. Um, if you're a fitness professional, I also have CEU workshops and, and um, that are CEU approved. So you can see all of those on my website. Here are my, uh, my social media posts. Um, so Facebook, fitnessfoundry.net, YouTube, Fitness Foundry, Instagram, Fitness Foundry USA, Twitter, Fitness Foundry. Uh, don't log off yet because I got to show you my Facebook closed group because it's not listed on there. And I want to say thank you to everybody for watching and sharing and liking. And don't, don't stop yet. And those are all the books I currently have available. So let me show you that closed group. Let's see. I should have it up. And there it is. So all you have to do is join the group. I'll approve. And then you'll be in good company. Um, thank you again, my friends. Post your comments. Subscribe and break out or break even.